use synthetic division not only to divide a polynomial by a divisor of x minus r, but because of the connection between the remainder theorem and p of r, we can actually look at evaluating a polynomial at a value by using synthetic division. So here it's asking us to use synthetic division. So if it actually asks you to use a process, you'll want to show your work so that you make sure that the person reading your information realizes that you use the requested method. So use synthetic division to evaluate p of x equal 4x to the fifth minus 3x squared plus x minus 1, 4, and then there's three different examples. The first one is to find p of negative 2. Now definitely, if you want to double check your work and make sure that you're getting it right, you could take out all the x's in p of x, replace them with negative 2, follow your order of operations of doing exponents first, then the multiplication, combine your like terms, and get your polynomial value. But because they want us also to use synthetic division for this, we're going to do it with the synthetic division method that they requested. Now, to evaluate a polynomial at a specific value using synthetic division, in the half box, we put the value that they want us to evaluate the polynomial at. Then we want the coefficients of the polynomial making sure the polynomial is in descending order, and if there's any um, powers on the variable that are missing in the polynomial, showing those coefficients of zero to make sure that you get the correct value. So here, fifth power, and then second, first, and no power. It is in descending order. But if I think about the countdown, five, four, three, two, one, none, then I have an x to the fifth, but I don't have an x to the fourth and I don't have an x to the third before I get to the x to the second. So I'll need zero coefficients for those missing terms. So we'll just do the coefficients. So that's four, there's no x to the fourth, there's no x to the third, it's negative three x squared plus one x and then minus one. Drop down a line and draw your horizontal line then bring the first number down without doing anything to it, then multiply what's in the half box times that number, negative two times four is negative eight, write it up underneath the zero, or the next term, then zero plus negative eight is negative eight, negative two times negative eight is positive 16, zero plus 16 is 16, negative two times 16 is negative 32, Negative 3 plus negative 32 is negative 35. Negative 2 times negative 35 is 70. 1 plus 70 is 71. And then negative 2 times 71 is a negative 142. And then my negative 1 plus negative 142 is negative 143. So P of negative 2 comes out to be the value of the remainder, negative 143. Another thing you want to make sure is that you state what your answer is from what they asked you to do in the question. Some of these types of questions want you to write the quotient times the divisor plus the remainder form, or some want you to state the quotient and the remainder. This one asked me to evaluate the polynomial. So since I wanted to evaluate the polynomial at a particular value, I want to state that I know that this remainder is the same as the polynomial value I get out when I take and put r through the polynomial. So I want to make sure that I state that p of negative 2 is negative 143. So let's go to the next one, p of 3. So for p of 3, I'm going to put 3 in the half box, put my coefficients of my polynomial, drop down a line, draw my horizontal bar, bring the first number down, then multiply 4 times 3 is 12, and then add 0 plus 12 is 12. Multiply 3 times 12 is 36, then add 0 plus 36 is 36. Multiply 3 times 36 is 108, and add negative 3 plus 108 is 105. 
multiply 3 times 105 is 315. Add 1 plus 315 is 316. And then multiply 3 times 316 is 948. And add negative 1 plus 148, or 948 is 947. So P of 3 is 947. Now this also works if I'm evaluating my polynomial at a non-real complex number. So here we're going to put the 2i in the half box, put my coefficients of 4, 0, 0, negative 3, 1, and negative 1. Drop halfway down, draw the horizontal bar, bring the first number down without doing anything to it, and then go through the same process we did when it was a real number. So 2i times 4 is 8i. 0 plus 8i is still 8i. 2i times 8i. So if you don't remember how to multiply your complex numbers, make sure you go back and review that, um, especially if you're dividing by a complex number that has a real part as well as an imaginary part. So 2i times 8i. 2 times 8 is 16i times i is i squared. So that's 16i squared. But remember, i squared is negative 1. So 16 times negative 1 is a negative 16. Now 0 plus negative 16 is negative 16. And then multiply again. So 2i times negative 16 is a negative 32i. And then you also want to review how to add or subtract complex numbers because remember, now we want to add. Well, negative 3 doesn't have an i after it, but the negative 32i does. So when I take negative 3 and combine it with negative 32i, they're not like terms. So I just write negative 3 minus 32i. Now, the next time we need to go through the process, we're going to take 2i and multiply it to negative 3 minus 32i. So remember that 2i needs to distribute to each term. And then you also need to remember that i squared is negative 1. So 2i times negative 3 is a negative 6i. And then I have 2i times a negative 32i, so that'll be a negative 64i squared. But i squared is negative 1, so negative 64 times negative 1 is a positive 64. And we like to write the real number first, the real part first, and then the complex part, or the imaginary part. So we want to write this as 64 minus 6i. Now we want to add, 1 doesn't have an i, so 1 is going to be added to the real part of the complex number. So 1 plus 64 minus 6i is 65 minus 6i. And then one more part, or one more stage, we're going to multiply 2i through the 65 minus 6i. So we're going to have 2i times 65 is 130i. And then 2i times a negative 6i well, that's negative 12i squared, but negative 12i squared, i squared is negative 1. So negative 12 times negative 1 is positive 12, and we want to write the real part first and the imaginary part second. So that is going to be 12. And then remember, that is 130i, so plus 130i. And when I take negative 1 plus, or plus 12 plus 130i, I get one, uh, sorry, I get 11 plus 130i. So P of 2i is 11 plus 
135. So there you have three different examples of how to use synthetic division to evaluate your polynomial at either a real number or a non-real complex number.